Today, we're talking about myths about vaginal estrogen. Now, vaginal estrogen, those are products that have to be prescribed by a doctor. These are not over-the-counter options, but lately I've been hearing lots of different myths about the vaginal estrogen products, whether it's how to use them or are they safe. So if you've been interested in vaginal estrogen products, if you've been hearing some myths about them that you want me to break down for you, or you just want to learn more because you're already using vaginal estrogen, this video is for you. And we know so much about the safety of vaginal estrogens, those medication products that do not travel systemically, they really locally treat the pelvic floor, the bladder, the urethra, the vagina, the labia, and the clitoris, that I really want to break down myths for you so that you do not get stuck on these false myths and this does not prevent you from using vaginal estrogen. In terms of how safe vaginal estrogen is, there was a big review in 2016 showing that vaginal estrogen did not increase the risk of breast cancer, cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, blood clots, or strokes. Now, why that's really important is because local or topical or vaginal estrogen, we kind of say all those things. You might hear me say those things or other menopause experts, but those medications that are prescribed that go in the vagina are really just for the pelvic floor and vaginal health. Those levels do not travel in any meaningful way systemically. Side note, there is one product that goes in the vagina called the Femring, which is systemic hormone therapy, but just know that everything else is local, topical, or vaginal estrogen. The reason that's also important is that you actually can see a black box warning on vaginal estrogen products when you go to pick them up. And this is something that is infuriating to me and pretty much most menopause experts and even internist gynecologists who prescribe vaginal estrogen because of its safety all the time. Now NAMS, the North American Menopause Society, did create a task force to discuss with the FDA removing this black box warning, but it hasn't been able to do so. That black box warning comes from 2002-2003 data from the results of the Women's Health Study that was looking at oral Premarin and oral Prempro. What you need to know about that is that after you really feel comfortable and confident about the safety of vaginal estrogen, do not worry or think twice about that black box warning and I'm sorry that it's there. In 2019 in The Lancet, a huge study actually was published looking at data from breast cancer survivors using vaginal estrogen showing no increased recurrence of breast cancer. So what you need to know about that is that one, not only does that confirm that it does not increase the risk of breast cancer, it doesn't travel systemically, but that many doctors and oncologists, those who treat cancer, especially breast cancer, are becoming more and more okay with the use of vaginal estrogens because of how atrophic the vaginal tissue can become after chemotherapy. So let's get into the myths now that we know that background data. Myth number one is that vaginal estrogen is unsafe or vaginal estrogen will increase your risk for cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, blood clots, strokes, or breast cancer. And I just disproved all of that. Again, vaginal estrogen in every form has been shown to not travel systemically in any degree that it can increase your risk for any of those chronic conditions. Now, how do I know this? Well, if I were to go out to the supermarket and have everyone come get their blood levels checked who were in menopause, their estrogen levels would range between zero and 20. And to give you a little bit of a reference, when you were premenopausal, your estrogen would be 50 to 500 at any given time. So some women do make a little bit of estrogen every once in a while, even postmenopausally. It's really not enough to register because again, the body will change postmenopausally. When women are on vaginal estrogen products, when we check blood levels of estrogen, they are always in that zero to 20 range. So again, that just demonstrates that blood levels of estrogen do not change at all with the use of vaginal estrogen. Doesn't matter if you use it every single day, doesn't matter how you use it, does not travel systemically. The second myth is that estriol is better than estradiol. So, I get this question a lot in my inbox. Should I be using estriol? You should be using estradiol, point blank. And let me explain this. 
The body makes three different kinds of estrogens. Estradiol makes up about 90 to 95% of the estrogen that our body sees and utilizes. And there's also estriol and esterone, and these are very, very weak, weakly potent estrogens. In fact, estriol and esterone are sometimes what's in counter options to help with, you know, say, treating hot flashes. So if you put estriol in the vagina, it's really no better than a vaginal moisturizer. So I would definitely consider estradiol, not estriol. If you guys are loving this video, you should definitely check out this video I did here. This video is all about vaginal estrogen, the different types of products. And knowing what product is gonna work for you and what you're going to like, really important so I would definitely go check that out come back over here because one of the things that I see doctors get wrong a lot is how frequently you can use vaginal estrogens often I usually write them even myself as two or three times a week but because of how safe vaginal estrogen is if you wanted to use it more frequently if that's really what you needed to help repair the pelvic floor tissues then use it more frequently I have some women who use vaginal esterase five times a week six times a week four times a week I have some who also use it once or twice a week because that's really all they need for their body but you should definitely discuss this with your doctor but you can absolutely change or increase the frequency of the way you use vaginal estrogen products any other myths you might have seen about vaginal estrogen decreasing um, vitamins or supplements in your body is also absolutely hogwash because the vaginal estrogen does not travel systemically and so you don't have to worry about it interacting with any of your other medications or the nutrients you're eating in your foods or supplements that you are taking. And can you use vaginal estrogen after a history of breast cancer? Well, again, this is individualized and you're gonna to wanna to discuss this with your doctor and your oncologist. But where I practice here in Boston, many oncologists are becoming more and more okay with using vaginal estrogens after breast cancer because the pelvic floor is really deserving of it. The medications used to treat or prevent a recurrence of breast cancer can be really harsh on the pelvic floor and we're learning more and more how important it is to actually balance keeping the pelvic floor healthy as well as how important it can be to maintain sexual health with a partner and so there's lots again of more data showing how safe vaginal estrogen products are even for our breast cancer survivors you guys i discussed this all in the reclaiming menopause Masterclass, where i really help women who are symptomatic suffering confused and stuck with their doctor to become symptom free educated and empowered we have so much fun and we're really building not only uh, that empowerment and that education but a sisterhood as well you get direct support from me and i give you all the tools tips and tricks to be really successful at this right where you are if you want to consider joining definitely check out the link in the description bar below we will discuss together if the class is a good fit for you and i would love to see you as my student however if you are watching this and it's been helpful please also let me know i know that my mission is to really expose the gaps uh, in women's health particularly at midlife and for women so thank you guys so much for watching there's so much good information on vaginal health and vaginal estrogens here on my channel so let me know what else you'd like to learn about in this topic i will see you guys again next week for a brand new video bye everyone